Okay, uh, 1996 Jeep Cherokee Sport Edition in my six cylinder and a head gasket. Whoa. That's Edward. Anyway, uh, Hesper came in. Uh, this head, unfortunately, the gasket's actually been replaced twice before this. This is going to be the third time. Um, both times beforehand, the cylinder head was not taken to a machine shop. Very first time, it was a, the head gasket had blown. The engine was severely overheated. So in theory, we've got a warped or cracked head. There has been detected of hydrocarbons in the coolant or exhaust gases mixing with the coolant. So we have a leaking head gasket and or warped and or cracked cylinder head. We're going to be removing this head gasket and take it to the machine shop and see how the cylinder head is functionality wise. Start it off with you have your upper radiator hose hooks here. This is one of the heater hoses. I've already removed them. I just set them off to the side here. That's pretty self explanatory. You also have another heater hose that comes right here. Also removed, set out to the side. You have several PCV hoses that come off the valve cover. This one goes to the air box right there. And there is another one right here that goes to the actual PCV valve, which is right there. You have to be especially careful removing this one because this one is prone to break. These are plastic. Once that breaks, you're in a world of hurt. Once those are removed, we're going to remove the throttle linkage in the air box. And we'll film this as we remove the entire system. Okay, now that we have removed the previous parts, we're going to start with the electrical. This is the electrical for the fuel rail and a number of sensors hooked to the throttle body. These are pretty self-explanatory. Fuel injectors push these two clips together, remove it. Same thing with the other ones. There is one wire, this wire that goes down there that is plugged into an oxygen sensor. You'll have to crawl underneath there and unplug that as well. So we're going to get all this unplugged and Okay, little um, little addition to the last piece. Um, to unplug this oxygen sensor, you can either crawl underneath it, but you do have to remove this power steering pump to remove the engine. Or I'm sorry, the cylinder head itself. Anyway, so I'm just going to remove the power steering pump, unbolt it, and set it to the side. Make it easier to get to the O2 sensor and kill two bones with one stone. But to remove that, first you have to remove the serpentine belt. Now it's kind of hard to see, but this little bolt right here, this is an adjuster. Down there. Now, well, this is really hard to see, and I'm not going to be able to get this on camera. Maybe. Okay, this pulley right down there. This one right here. You loosen that center bolt there, and then you, re re I'm sorry, you loosen this. This will loosen the belt. These are the adjusters. That's the hold down. This is the adjuster for the serpentine belt. So once you have that undone, you can undo the belt, and then this power steering pump has three bolts, I believe they're 13 millimeters. You have to get through the tiny holes on the pulley to get them off. Now to do that, you might need to remove this fan shroud, make it a little bit more clearance. And I'm gonna see if I can get it out without removing that. However, if I do, there is just a, a few 10 millimeter bolts to remove that as well. Okay, um, now that we have all the wiring um, back in Heim's removed from the intake manifold, we can continue our disassembly. The reason why we disconnect everything, obviously we have to remove it. However, the easiest way to do it on these engines, the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold are bolted to the same side of the head and share bolts. So what we do is we disconnect everything, pull the cylinder head off with the manifold still connected. And it makes it so much easier. It's a little heavier, but it makes it so much easier than trying to fight with all these bolts on the side of the head. Now, the only thing left on the intake manifold is the fuel rail. You have a fuel line coming in. Now, there is a special way you have to remove this. This is a lock. You put a screwdriver in there, you pop that off, okay? That's more of a safety clip. Inside of here, you'll see it looks like a little bell. What you need are these little fuel line disconnects. And that inserts inside of here, you push it and it unlocks the line. Refer to the manufacturer's instructions if you need any help. These you can get from any local auto parts store for about 20 bucks. Here's a better illustration of the fuel line disconnect tool. Slid in there. Once it's disconnected there, you kind of pull the line off. Hard to see, but inside of here, there's a tiny little clips that have to be depressed by this tool to pull it off. Sometimes these can be rusted. Now, if this, what they call nipple, is extremely rusted, do not attempt to do this because it'll snap right off. I've had this happen to me numerous times, unfortunately, and this is very common for it. If it comes to that, unbolt the fuel rail from the intake manifold using several 10 millimeter bolts 
and then gently rock the fuel rail until it pulls out and set it to the side. That is much better than having to replace a fuel rail because of uh, a little broken. Okay, next step, we remove the valve cover. Now, this is relatively simple. You have a number of 11 millimeter bolts that secure the valve cover all the way around it. You remove all the bolts, remove the valve cover. Pretty self-explanatory. Here's the valve cover. Now this one doesn't have as much indication of a blown head as some, uh, many have ever done. The oil isn't horribly contaminated. However, do have a little bit of a sign inside of this valve cover. That yellowish right there, that's oil coolant contamination. And it's in the back of the valve cover as well. Next thing we're going to do is you have to remove the push rods and the rockers. That way, when you lift the head off, it doesn't damage these. To do that, you remove each one of these bolts, lift these off, and set them on a clean rag on the ground or on a workbench. You have to put these in order. These push rods sometimes are in different orders. So if you put them in incorrectly, you could cause severe damage to the engine internally as well on top here. We're going to remove these bolts and Okay, we have the rockers and the push rods removed, and I just wanted to show a proper way to organize them. Push rods matching up to the rockers. Okay. Next thing we've got, you obviously need to remove your spark plug wires. Be careful and make sure you label these correctly or else you're going to have problems doing it. Some models, they have a ground strap back here. I have to remove that. That's bolted to the head. And then what you have to do, the exhaust system is hooked up underneath this with two bolts. That is a donut style gasket. You have to go underneath there and unhook it or unbolt it. From there, we can actually unbolt the head and lift the whole assembly out of there. Okay, now that we have the downpipe unbolted, um, one smaller thing we forgot to mention before we take it off, move this light out of here. There is two bolts right here. They're 10 millimeter. This secures the fuel line to the intake manifold. You need to remove that before you do the next step, okay? Now, the head bolts, these are the head bolts, okay? Head bolts are at half inch, 12 point socket. Make sure it's 12 point, half inch. It has to be deep well to fit these. Which you, once you, that's loose, you're gonna start loosening these head bolts. Now the best thing you could possibly do is loosen them in a cross pattern. For example, this one, back left, back right, front left here, and then vice versa, unloosen it like you were tightening an oil pan. Okay, we have the cylinder head completely unbolted. All the head bolts have been removed, excluding this back one, but for some reason you can't really get it out because there's a lip here and you can't move it. So we're gonna have to leave that one in. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to rock the cylinder head to help break the seal and then lift the cylinder head off with the manifolds. Now, a note, you might wanna have a partner help you with this because it's kind of heavy. So here comes a All right, we have the cylinder head off, sitting on the workbench, manifold still attached. Now we're going to remove our manifolds, and these are the several bolts that do it, so it can go to the machine shop. And uh, here's our block. We're going to send it to the machine shop, have them either fix it, see what's going on with it, and uh, we'll continue this installation in a few days.